So, uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Rita, I'm a biomedical engineering student at the University of Coimbra in Portugal and I'm currently doing my master thesis in collaboration with Erasmus MC and KU Leuven. Uh, the theme of my thesis is an automated optic disc and laminar cuirosa segmentation in optical coherence tomography scans in both healthy and glaucomatous eyes. Uh, now, uh, let me tell you a little bit more about the motivation behind my work first. The laminar cuirosa is a mesh-like structure through which the retina ganglion cell axons be pass before converging in the optic nerve head. The lamina cuirosa is anatomically located in a weak spot uh, prone to mechanical strain and uh, that is def uh, easily deformed. This deformation will compromise uh, nutrient transport and tissue remodeling. So it's only natural that uh, these structural changes are the first ones to happen in disease development, which has already been uh, verified by several studies. Now, these uh, structural changes have mainly been studied in the context of glaucoma. Uh, however, the lamina cuirosa is uh, like a window to the systemic system, so changes in its structure can also be representative of uh, non-ophthalmic diseases like Alzheimer's, diabetes, Parkinson, and multiple uh, sclerosis, among others. Nowadays, OCT is the best imaging technique to visualize the optic nerve. However, the OCT signal is attenuated while reaching deeper structures, uh, and the shadow of the blood vessels can limit the detection of some optic nerve structures, particularly the lamina cuirosa that is uh, located deeper on the optic uh, disc. That's why there is already more work already done in segmenting for example, the retina layers at the macula, then in, uh, in the optic disc. But uh, the importance of lamina cuirosa and the fact uh, that manual segmentation is time consuming and prone to errors makes uh, automatic segmentation of the optic disc in OCT uh, scans very important and able to deeply improve clinical diagnosis and follow up. Uh, now I want just to just give you some context about what I'll be presenting uh, after. First, I will tell you about some things I learned from the literature review I have been working on since starting my thesis. And in the end, I will give you uh, some insight on what I'll be implementing and what are my choices. So from my review, uh, I have three categories. The first one is conventional methods. So conventional is a word uh, I use to describe algorithms based mostly in image processing techniques and that do not include any type of learning mechanism. These techniques are mostly based in pixel classification and segment the image based on quantifiable pictures like image intensity and gradient magnitude. However, since they perform way better in segmenting the surface and boundaries because that's where uh, changes in the pixels are more detectable. The, the, the type of parameters we can extract for, from this kind of segmentation are still very poor. And that's why we have uh, machine learning methods. Uh, machine learning methods, uh, I have them here in a separate category, uh, but they are mainly a continuation of the conventional methods. Uh, these techniques are normally applied after some conventional uh, method technique in order to improve its uh, accuracy, its performance, and uh, for it to be able to better detect the whole structure uh, of the optic disc, which can sometimes be a challenge. However, they still fail to segment both connective and neural tissue. And that's why deep learning methods have been uh, more and more used recently, because they can fill this flaw by considering both low-level features like edge information and contrast, and also high-level features like noise and texture. Uh, most uh, of the recent studies using deep learning can already uh, segment all these tissues like retinal nerve fiber layer, preliminary tissue, retinal pigment epithelium, choroid scleral amina cuirosa, such as you can see on the, 
on the image on the slide. And uh, this, uh, this group in particular could already perform very well in segmenting all these tissues. Uh, however, there's still a, pro a problem to address, that is the fact that there are a lot of OCT devices being used and algorithms are normally specific for only one. They use manual segmentations from one uh, specific OCT device and they only perform for that one. So it's difficult to have a universal algorithm that can be used in various clinics, clinics and still have comparable results. So this same group addressed that problem. Uh, they proposed an enhancer for uh, pre-processing images from uh, three OCT devices, uh, spectral domain OCT. Uh, and the enhancer was based in deep learning and could not only improve the quality of the images and its visibility, but also reduce the differences between the images from different devices. Uh, this was uh, very good progress. And after that, the, after this pre-processing step, they proposed um, tissue segmentation using CNN, a convolutional neural network. Uh, 3D CNN has not been widely used yet in this kind of application, but uh, they are able to combine uh, information from each image with uh, depth-wise spatial information from adjacent images. So with this in mind, uh, the group proposed the following. The, they had three segmentation networks the, that differed from each other in the design of feature extraction, and each one gave an equally plausible segmentation. Now, since uh, segmentation of uh, ambiguous regions like lamina cribrosa and sclera uh, can differ quite a lot between networks with different architectures, they also used an assembler. Uh, an assembler is a learning approach that is capable of combining um, different predictions from different networks and provide a more robust segmentation in the end. From my search, this is the best performing method uh, yet, and therefore is one of my main inspirations for my work. Now, about uh, my work. I have already been working in creating a data set of manual segmentation, su such as the one you can see here on the slide. In order to do this, I have had the help of an ophthalmologist, and we have been using uh, data from the Livonai study. Uh, this study includes uh, several type of uh, glaucoma patients, suspects of glaucoma, and also healthy eyes. Uh, currently, I'm working on implementing a network based on UNET to train the data set of manual segmentations. Uh, this is still a work in progress, and uh, unfortunately, I was not able to have results ready for today. Uh, but my goal in the end is to provide an automatic segmentation that can hopefully fill some of the gaps uh, left uh, uh, by the previous, by the existing methods, and then can be either, for example, uh, improved the segmentation or the validation of more instruments in the algorithm. Uh, after uh, obtaining the segmentation, I want to extract uh, clinical relevant parameters, such as the brush membrane opening, focal defects, uh, lamina cribrosa depth, thickness and curvature, and then use these parameters to provide an automatic classification of each volume in either healthy or glaucoma. Finally, I want to develop an interface that can easily be used uh, by doctors in clinical, clinical practice. And that's what I had to show you today. I really hope you liked it and thank you so much for your attention.